So it's the one year anniversary of the Sweater Guys web series and we wanted to do something special for today's episode. A year ago today, we told the story of the Sweater Guys. It's a tech startup called the Sweater Guys. And today, we are a year wiser, um, a year more experienced, and we want to retell that story. So without further ado, here is the story of the Sweater Guys. The Sweater Guys. Sweater guys, 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 sweater and we started saying, yeah, sure, why not? We can be the sweater guys. Then things started getting out of control. We started doing orders from all across Canada and had to teach ourselves everything from managing finances, balancing the book, sales, marketing strategy. It was absolutely insane. It was the most exciting and rewarding thing any of us had ever done, but it was also crazy and completely detrimental to our health. It was a very rocky night. Because the problem with entrepreneurship is that once you start a company, it's pretty hard to go back. So yeah, the curse of the first dollar. It's that first dollar you make doing something you love sets you down this path so that you can't really work for anyone else ever again because you've already produced and created something of your own and you've made a profit off of it. Doing well in school, managing our classes became very difficult because we were completely involved in doing this thing that we loved. Chapter two. A bad idea is the best idea. By the time second semester rolled around, we weren't sleeping, like, at all. We'd pull these 55-hour work shifts all without getting a wink of sleep. So the theory is if you can stay awake for 20, 24 hours, everyone's dead tired at that point. But if you can push yourself to stay awake through that tired phase, then you enter this sort of zombie-like mental state where it allows you to continue to stay awake and continue to work until you're up for like 40, sometimes 50 hours. Pretty sure Dexter holds a record for being awake for the longest time at 62 hours with like two one hour naps, like here and there. A typical schedule looked like this. Wake up at 2 a.m., put in six hours of work before class, head to an 8.30 and then back to work during lunch break at noon, class till four, printing from 5 p.m. to 8.30 a.m. the next day, drop off deliveries on the way to class, day of class, all night on R&D and then pass out at 9 a.m., then catch nine hours of sleep before repeating the cycle. It wasn't ideal, but it was what we had to do in order to make ends meet. Because the truth is that our original idea wasn't a very good one. There wasn't anything that set it apart. It wasn't uh, original or creative or highly profitable. But 10,000 hours of printing later, a couple bad grades and countless months of sleep deprivation, we came up with the breakthrough. Because oftentimes the best ideas start off as a bad idea that you then pivot into something interesting. We said, how can we take this industry that is worth a lot of money, that no one thinks is interesting, that no one is excited to order from, and how do we make it sexy? How do we make it inspiring? Chapter three, what is code? We would set ourselves apart by building robots. Yes, robots. And I know that sounds crazy, but we knew the process, knew what it would take, and had the unrelenting work ethic to make it happen. If we could reinvent the entire printing process with robotic automation, we could build a new model for fast fashion that was ethical and environmental because everything would be printed on demand and locally, and it would also be so cheap to manufacture and so fast that we could offer the best prices and guarantee two-day delivery. Theoretically, it's possible. We pivoted into a tech company, officially registered the business, and things started getting really, really exciting. We knew we wanted to turn the Sweater Guys into a tech company, but we didn't have any of the skills required to do that. Code, electronics, mechanics, finances, business development, even like running a company. So we taught ourselves. We spent four months reading blogs, doing coding tutorials, auditing grad level lectures at McGill. I taught myself 15 coding languages and built a website from scratch. Everything from servers to APIs to authorization to domain routing the whole nine yards. Yeah, so I learned CAD, mechanics, uh, electronics, 
machine automation, uh, Raspberry Pi, or Arduino, and I built my first printer. Usually a DTG costs around like twenty to forty thousand dollars, and I managed to build one for about five hundred. I built a DTG. I don't know if I've ever put as much work into one thing. <laughs> Who would have known that building a tech company is a lot harder than printing sweaters in a dark room? I wish I got a real summer job. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter four, we're broke. We built this entire company from an initial investment of only $300 and last year did over $60,000 in sales. The only problem is we spent $80,000. We had a line of credit that was due at the bank, uh, salaries to pay, rent to pay, equipment to maintain, uh, and no investors in sight. And that's when we had the important realization. When it comes down to the bottom line, no one cares how hard you work. It all comes down to tangible success and guaranteed deliverables. So we turned it around. We stayed later, we worked harder. We narrowly avoided bankruptcy nine times. We built a procedure called martial law, which basically means whenever we're about to go under, we call everyone into the office and you cannot leave the office until we're no longer in debt. Last week's martial law took about four days, yeah. <laughs> Chapter five. Aggressive expansion. Aggressive expansion. Flash forward to today, we have a new office, two new employees. Hi guys, I'm PJ. Hi guys, I'm Vasily. A new partner. Is it my bit now? So we need to deploy a new instance of a server onto the cloud with And I think the paradox of, of this whole process has been the more that you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know. So. Starting a business is really, really easy for the first four months. Then there's like three years of absolute shit. And that's when most people give up. You run out of money, a partner leaves, people stop watching your videos, there's a fire, or any one of a million things that could possibly go wrong all go wrong at the same exact time. But that's when you have to keep going. A lot of people ask what the hardest part of starting a business is. Some people say it's timing, or the idea, or the team. And I don't think it's any of those. It's not the idea. We had a bad idea and it didn't stop us from doing anything. Timing is super important, but there's no way of knowing whether your timing is right until you fail at trying and then try again. And it's definitely not our team. Our team literally could not have been less qualified for what we were trying to do. It's persistence, an undying, unrelenting, aggressive work ethic. When no one is watching, when it's not fun anymore, when everyone in their right minds is asleep, you and your team are hunkered in a room somewhere building robots and burning the midnight oil. Wake up every morning and go to work. Work harder than everyone. Work smarter than everyone and every single day stay later than everyone. And eventually you end up with something that you're really proud of. You don't have to be good at anything. You don't need any money. Just take a really bad idea and never give up. So that's the story of the Sweater Guys. I just want to say on a personal note, uh, thank you so much to everyone who watched the Sweater Guys web series and followed this uh, uh, crazy roller coaster ride over the last year. I am so incredibly fortunate to be able to uh, do what I love and get paid, even though it's a very small amount of money. And yeah, uh, it's only going to get crazier from here. So thank you so much for watching and uh, stay tuned. Next week on The Sweater Guys. So the thing that we left out of the web series was the night before uh, the company really started, Dex and I got into this massive fist fight. I'm actually head of manufacturing because after the fight, Dexter was physically unable to actually print because he's still recovering. <laughs> <laughs>